Welcome to the 37th session of the first module of the course Signals and Systems. We will now complete the continuous time convolution that we had undertaken in the previous session. By complete I mean let us write down all the outputs of the convolution in the three regions that we had identified and then sketch them. You must get a complete understanding of that particular convolution. So, we had identified three regions. The first region was T greater than or equal to T 1 plus T 2 and less than or equal to T 1 plus T 2 plus capital T 1. Region 2, T goes from T 1 plus T 2 plus capital T 1, T 1 plus T 2 plus capital T. Of course, capital T 2 is greater than capital T 1, so valid. And finally, region 3 was T is greater than T 1 plus T 2 plus capital T 2, but less than or equal to T 1 plus T 2 plus the sum of capital T 1 and capital T 2. And the convolution values in region 1, 2 and 3 were as follows. I will just write them down in this horizontal fashion. Here it was T minus T 1 plus T 2. Here it was a constant at capital T 1. And here it was essentially a dying or reducing line. So, for the last part, we had written down the output of the convolution as essentially a different. So, you know, let us by sketching this, we will get an idea. First, the convolution rises, reaches T1, and then goes to the end, falling off as a dying line or a reducing line. Now, the convolution is a function of T, it begins at T1 plus T2. There is a transition of behavior at T1 plus T2 plus capital T1. One more transition of behavior at T1 plus T2 plus capital T2. And the final transition to 0 at this. In this region, the convolution takes the value capital T1, a rising line here and a falling line there, 0 beyond here and 0 before here. Region 1 region 2, region 3, all straight line, 0 here and 0 here. Now, notice something interesting. Here, our convolution was simplified because you were always multiplying two constant functions and finding the area under a constant product. You could, if you wish, think of it in a metaphorical sense as all passengers having the same strength, all the passengers inside the train and all the passengers outside the train have same unit strength. So, when they handshake, they all contribute unity and then we integrate and find the combined effect. What if the passengers, as will often be the case, have different strengths, they have different builds and different strengths. What does that mean? For example, suppose we were to try and convolve the following two functions. Let us take an example convolve this function, the function that rises from 0 to 1 over an interval of t 1. So, t 1 to t 1 plus capital T 1 with another function that rises over an interval of t 2. Let us call this x 1 t and let us call this x 2 t. Now, here you should think of it as again passengers and a train with passengers inside the train and outside the train, passengers spaced very closely together into a continuum. The only thing is the passengers have different strengths. So, the tallest and strongest passengers are in the end and the weaker passengers are in the beginning. But you know you have to be careful. Again, suppose again without loss of generality, let us take capital T 2 to be greater than capital T 1, because you can always interchange the order of the functions and the convolution is not affected. So, without loss of generality here, let T 2 be greater than T 1 and we can do the same. We could put the platform with the passengers which have a longer strip and the train with the passengers that have the shorter strip and let us draw both the platform and the train. The platform would now look like this. I do not need to carry out all the explanations again. I will just straight away draw the platform and the train now. If 
fact, we must now write down proper expressions analytically for the passengers in the platform and on the train. So, here for this one, I would write the expression. Well, how much, how much is this really? It is take the difference from the point lambda at which you are from t 2. So, lambda minus t 2 divided by the entire interval which is covered. So, capital T 2 into 1 that is the value anywhere here in this region. And here I need to take again I could write a similar expression there. So, I would have written so T minus lambda and so on and so forth is not it. So, I can write a similar expression for this. So, I could write here T minus lambda minus T 1 divided by T 1. Now, for example, if you take lambda equal to this T minus T 1 plus capital T 1, you can see that it gives you 1. And when you take this value T minus T 1 here for lambda, you get 0. Now, again here we have three regions as before. However, now the convolution integral is a little more complicated. So, the regions are the same. Let us write down the regions. In fact, I will now calculate the convolution in each of the three regions. Let us write down those three calculations. Region 1, you know the regions do not change. T is greater than equal to T 1 plus T 2, but less than equal to T 1 plus T 2 plus capital T 1. And in that region, you essentially have the train not quite having entered the platform. So, I will draw the platform and the train in different colors here. I will superpose them. the train, which is the region of overlap. Let us mark that in green and let us calculate the product. This is the region of overlap. And we also need to write the expression everywhere. So, the expression for this is T minus lambda minus small t 1 divided by capital T 1. And we need to take the product to calculate the convolution. We take the product of this with this integrated over T 2 to T minus T 1. This region, integration region or integration interval. Let us write that down. So, we are saying essentially the convolution in region 1 is the product lambda minus t 2 divided by capital T 2 times t minus lambda minus t 1 divided by capital T 1 d lambda integrated from t 2 to t minus t 1. So, essentially there is going to be a quadrat that is to be expected. When you multiply two line segments and integrate, you are going to, going to get some kind of a quadratic here. Now, in fact, you know the integrand is quadratic, but when you integrate it is going to be cubic. So, in fact, if you look at it, it expands this, look at the expression here. The integ integrand is quadratic. So, you would have a lambda squared term and so on. So, the integral will be cubic. So, I mean you know it would require a little bit of algebra to work this out and that calculation I am leaving to you as an exercise. I am leaving to you the thing where you will have to work a little hard, but it would explain to you several things about convolution when you do it patiently and carefully. Now, the same approach can be found for region 2 and region 3. In fact, the only change, the integrand is really the same in region 2. It is just the limits that change. However, here one has to unlike the earlier example, where the convolution remained constant all through region 2, the convolution would not remain constant here. Because there are passengers of different strength interacting with each other even all through region 2. Region 2 is the region where the train moves within the platform strip. 
And finally, there is the portion where the train starts leaving the platform strip and there again the expression is the same, but the region of, over which you integrate that expression, the integram is different. So, I leave this as an exercise to you. I recommend that you complete this and sketch this. You expect that you would get three cubic segments in your sketch. It would be a good exercise to complete this and understand those sketches in some depth. Please do that exercise. Thank you.